Hi, I'm Steve Gabriel with the Cornell Small Farms Program. We're just gonna go through the process of inoculating shiitake bolts. Of all the outdoor mushroom cultivation practices, uh, shiitake mushroom logs are definitely the most profitable. Uh, our website, cornellmushrooms.org, has a number of supplemental guides and videos that you can brush up on the details, but we're just gonna cover the basics from a raw log to a finished fruity mushroom. So to inoculate shiitake logs, you want to do this as efficiently as possible. And the best way is to have three separate stations for each of the steps in the process. So the first is we're going to drill here, then we're going to move it onto that table and we're going to inoculate it with the mushrooms, and then we're going to wax over the holes that we drilled and filled. So we want to keep each of these steps separate and think about our ergonomics and how it's going to work for us as we go. So when we're drilling, we like this kind of rack because we can put it up at a comfortable height we can adjust the legs if we need to. And then as we go, we can sort of turn the log with one hand. And then from there, we take it down to the table. And by just simply putting a couple two by fours on a sawhorse, we create a stable place for the log to rest. And then as we go, we can just push the log down the table. So it really minimizes the amount that we have to lift the log. So what we want to start with is a log that is about three feet long and about four to eight inches in diameter. We want a fresh log, meaning it was cut anywhere from uh, a day ago to uh, about three months we consider fresh. Anything older than that could have competitive fungi uh, in it. And you can use oak, sugar maple, beech, hop hornbeam, birch, a whole bunch of different types of wood to do this. We're gonna start the process by drilling holes in the log. We're gonna drill holes four inches apart, and then we're gonna do a next row two inches from that row and we're going to offset it and make this little diamond pattern. So here we are, about four inches between holes and then about two inches between each row with the offset pattern. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's pretty good. The point is to spread the mycelium that we're going to put in these holes evenly throughout the log. So the next step is to fill these holes with the mushroom mycelium. In this case we're using sawdust spawn and we empty it out in this pail to make it easy to get into this plunger, which if we stab into it a few times, we'll make this nice little pellet of mycelium. So spawn is a word for the mushroom mycelium that is uh, made for cultivational purposes by a laboratory. So we buy this from a producer and then we can use it to inoculate the logs. One of the things to keep in mind is that as you keep doing this in the pot, you're gonna pack all this mycelium down and it's not gonna easily fill. So every once in a while you wanna loosen everything up. Because what's really important is that the entire hole fills with the mycelium. You can check it with your finger to make sure it feels firm once you've filled it up. And if it's not full, then you wanna add it until it's completely firm and completely full. If you don't do that, it might not allow the mycelium to move from the sawdust into the wood. So the third step in the process is to wax over the holes to protect the mycelium and to keep moisture into the log. So we use cheese wax, which is a food grade wax, it's a paraffin blend. You need to make sure it's hot enough. Uh, it should actually smoke just a tiny bit and when you touch it with your brush it should kind of sizzle a little bit and when you actually touch the brush to the log you should get a little bit of sizzling. That's how you know it's hot enough to actually hold. And you're just gonna dab a little bit on each hole and work your way around the log. And that's all you need to do. So 
So after we've inoculated our log, for the first year, all we have to do is leave it in a nice shady spot somewhere in the woods. And what's happening now is over the next season, the mycelium is going to grow throughout this entire log and actually uh, eat, eat through all the wood and then it'll be ready to fruit. So generally we say 12 months from the time you inoculate, it'll be ready to start fruiting. So this stack of logs is all logs that have been uh, inoculated for at least a year or two years or three years. And you can see what the shiitake actually does is break down the log itself. So this one is probably actually not productive anymore now that the bark's off. But these other ones are, are ready to go. So what we need to do in order to make them fruit is to soak them. We soak them in a tank of water for 24 hours. And then we pull them out and put them on a little fruiting rack here. So they lean up and then they can produce the mushrooms. So after soaking, we pull the logs out and we put them on some kind of rack just to give them open space to fruit. And a couple days after we pull them out, they'll start to form these little shiitake mushrooms. And about seven days after we've pulled them out of the tank, they'll actually mature enough to pick. So these ones here are getting really close to being able to harvest. So after the logs have fruited, then they need to rest and actually recharge before they're ready to fruit again. And what we found is it takes about six to eight weeks to do that. So an easy way to manage the whole yard and all these logs is to divide them into seven different groups and you soak a group of logs each week. And by the time you get through the seventh group, you get back to the first one and that's been resting for the appropriate amount of time. What we find in New York State is you can produce these reliably from about June 1st through October 15th every year. And every time you soak a log, you'll get about a quarter to a half pound of mushrooms per log each time you soak.